Isn't it great to be here today? Amen. Amen. I'm going to find my notes eventually. <coughs> you know, I was visiting another church uh, last week, and uh, the preacher there had some, uh, some thoughts, and I thought, you know, that'd make, that'd make great communion thoughts, and um, I was on the docket to give communion thoughts today. So I'm going to borrow from that, and I'm going to do that unashamedly. My wife asked me, she said, are you going to really do that, uh, what you heard last week? And I said, sure, they don't have to be my thoughts. So, um, uh, so that's what I'm going to do this morning. Um, in John 6, verse 51, uh, Jesus told a crowd of people, he said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how could this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus told them, very truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching them in the synagogue at Capernaum. And, um, you know, the story goes on to say that there were plenty of disciples that were in the crowd that... Um, were pretty confused by all this, and they, um, they were so confused, they said, this is a strange teaching. Who can, who can believe something like this? Who can actually understand this? And a lot of the disciples, it says in this story, left him uh, after that day. And um, the 12 stayed along, and, and Jesus said, aren't you going to leave too? And they're like, no, we're, we're not going to leave. We believe that you are the Holy One of God and that you have the words of eternal life. So... Uh, Jesus was very pleased by this, and uh, I think what we're about to do and, and take a part of now is really what Jesus was talking about when he said, my flesh is real, fle real food and, and my blood is real. Um, you know, when we, when we eat something or, or take medicine or whatever, we, we take this and it, it becomes part of us now. We, we eat it, we drink it, and it becomes part of us now. We walk around with it, we move on with our lives through it, with, uh, with this in our bodies. And I think this is kind of what we do here in, in communion. When we, we take the bread and we, we drink the, the cup, um, we take this and we accept it. We accept Jesus as our sacrifice for our sins. We accept the blood that we drink that, um, that makes us whole. Obviously not the cup, but what it represents and what our faith is in. So uh, I just ask you to think about these things as we, uh, as we take this bread and as we pray. Father in heaven and Jesus our Lord, to say that you love us and, and that you've done so much for us is just such an understatement. We thank you for everything you've done. We especially thank you for Jesus, your son, and Jesus that, that you died on the cross for us and that this blood is what takes away our sins, that this, that this blood allows us to be with you and you and us. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for the words of eternal life that you gave and that you give to us even now. We, um, we thank you and we honor you. Father, we honor your son, Jesus. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Let's also take the cup that represents that blood that saves us and cleanses us. Father in heaven again, you loved us immensely. We, we thank you, Jesus, for this cup that we know represents that blood that takes away our sins. Thank you so much. Thank you for this good salvation, a salvation that we could never have without you. It is, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
See, good, good communion thoughts don't have to come from me at all, do they? See, we, I told you. Um, now we have a portion or a time that we can give back some of the things that, um, that God has so richly supplied to us. If you're like me, and I think a lot of, a lot of us in this audience are, um, we're blessed so richly. We, we want for nothing. We have everything that we need. And um, God gives us that, that opportunity, just like Jesus said, as I have loved you, so you must also love one another. And how many ways has Jesus loved us? And, and um, part of that is just providing everything that we need so richly that we have so much extra. And um, so now we have a chance to, to give back a little bit of that to the work of the church, to the work of the ministries that the church supports. Um, Chip is coming down here in, in a, a few seconds with his, uh, with his goat that he has, and it, uh, it just reminds us of the ministry we have, the Kids for Kids, where um, kids can come down and, and uh, take a little bit of what their parents gave them in order to, uh, to provide for widows in India. Uh, it's been a tremendous work, and we're so blessed to be a part of that. Um, kids of all ages can come down um, because our Father has blessed us with, with lots that we can give back. So pray with me, please. Dearest Father, again I say that to say that you've richly blessed us is such an understatement. And we just we pray as, as we give in, the, in um, this offering and as we give in our daily lives that you just remind us how much you've loved us and how you've called us to share that love. Um, we thank you so much for everything. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.